My why is my son. This is why I do all this. For all of you that are veterans, you are all with us. We will help any of you that I can. I love you all, and that's my why. Right back there in the room. I've been home about six months now And I still have my doubts I'm not sure how I got here Or how I'm gonna get out And my mama says I look the same As I did before I left But if she could see inside of me It would scare her to death I can still taste the powder from the battle of my gun. I can hear my sergeant screaming, run soldier, run. I can feel the backpack on my shoulders, got it weighed a ton. And I see Taught me how to put that uniform on I just can't get it on I'm, I'm sincerely honored to be here and really what the point I was trying to make is um, having left my tribe a year ago after leaving active duty for my entire adult life um, is hard. Civilian life is, is not the same, it's difficult and uh, an opportunity to come together with my brothers and sisters in arms and those of you who support us is huge. So I'm really excited to be here. A lot of uh, my background comes from being um, on combat deployments with a lot of uh, really awesome Americans. Um, and, and, uh, and that's my why, um, to Christine's point. And, and that's why I'm here. So just a, uh, a brief story on the Stella Ganglion block, because I guarantee you there's at least a few people in here uh, who have no idea what I'm even talking about. There's some of y'all in here who have received the procedure and have benefited from it. There are some of you who know other people who have, but just so everyone's aware, what we're talking about is a treatment for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Sometimes we call it PTSI or post-traumatic stress injury. It doesn't matter, the point is, PTSD, which is what it's commonly called, is an injury that can be healed and people can do very well from it. So that's where the injury thing comes from. For some. The procedure called Stella Ganglion Block is, is literally a injection of a local anesthetic into the side of the neck that's been around for 100 years. The procedure is not new. It's, it was performed since the 1920s for pain and other associated issues. And it was performed by just touching a bone in the side of the neck and injecting some local anesthetic to numb a nerve in the side of the neck. Um, and that, that's been around for a very long time. Um, the story of how this came and how our, our um, paths crossed on this um, happens somewhere around the, the 2008, 9, 10 period of time where several of us physicians in the special operations community have been serving alongside many very high functioning very highly intelligent, um, multiple deployments, community where people were just feeling the effects of multiple deployments, high stress environments, much akin to what our first responders feel on a daily basis all the time. So um, in that environment, what well, we had a lot of people who were really suffering from PTSD, but didn't know it, or didn't admit it, or didn't want to admit it. Um, and the, these things happen. So in the, in the special operations community, we have a saying of the five soft truths. So the first one is humans are more important than hardware. Humans are more important than hardware is important. Number two, we have another saying, if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. And number three, never ever quit. So what this consists of is, is really just a procedure where someone gets an injection of medicine in the side of the neck that treats their PTSD. But it's fascinating to me that this nerve that runs in the side of your neck on both sides, right next to the vagus nerve, is called the cervical sympathetic trunk. All of your fight or flight signals that travel between your brain and your body, and your body and your brain, are all these connections in the brain, 
all these connections in the body, and you all know them because they're the same things that happen when someone slams on the brakes in front of you on the highway when you're looking down at your phone and you look up and your heart races, your muscles tense, you sweat. All those things are the natural instinct of the fight or flight response. They're very common, very appropriate, and that's what keeps us alive a lot of times. But for some people, they become, that becomes dysfunctional. And these connections between the brain and the areas that trigger threat response and, and, and fear in the amygdala, and all these areas in the body are connected by a single anatomic funnel in the neck called the cervical sympathetic trunk. Well, that provides a very precise and accurate anatomic location that we can actually go in and intervene in the fight or flight system. And the thing that blows me away as a physician who's been doing this for a very long time is, why would we think that couldn't happen? Everything else in the body breaks, right? Like your Achilles tendon, your thyroid, your pancreas, whatever, stuff stops working right, correct? Like everybody knows that because every one of us in this room's got something that doesn't work right. Well, there's no difference between that and nerves. And there are nerves that can become dysfunctional and cause problems. We know that from phantom limb pain and other problems. Well, why would we think that could not happen in the autonomic nervous system or the cervical sympathetic trunk? So it makes total sense, and we probably should have figured this out a long time ago, so shame on us medical community. But just now, and over the past 10 years, we've really been trying to carry this message forward that with a simple, safe, ultrasound guided procedure, we can direct the local anesthetic into this nerve in the side of the neck. It will help reset or reboot the sympathetic nervous system and can cause dramatic relief for people's PTSD symptoms. And that's what we've been doing. I actually have had the injection done twice now, so I'm going to talk about my experience between the first time having it done and my second time. Uh, I did all the things Dr. Lynch said not to do after my first injection. I, I took that euphoria of the release of the immediate impact of the injection and how good I felt and that feeling of I don't need treatment, I don't need to do anything different in my life, this feeling is just going to last. The miracle worked, and it's going to just last forever. I was letting events in my life and things that were happening were, were back to impact me in a way that I couldn't handle anymore. And like Dr. Lynch said, I, I knew how to reach out for help. I'm not one to ask for help, and I didn't ask for help. And it, I went back to it spiraled again. And I found myself back into uh, inpatient PTSD treatment and kind of back to, to ground zero, back to scratch. And I was ready to give up. And I kind of made that decision in my head where I wasn't gonna give up completely because I have a daughter and I live for her. And she's the only reason why I live. But I gave up and trying. Essentially, I was just gonna exist and not live. So whatever goals and aspirations I had in life, I just kind of threw them away. And once again, like she did the first time, it was just a random phone call and Chris asked how how are you doing? And I said, good. <laughs> you know, everything's great. I'm alive. And that's all, all that really mattered. And she saw right through my BS. And she said, what's, what's going on? And I started to tell her. And I was at Dr. Lynch's office. I think it was two days later. And we were, we were back there. And this time on my second round, the first time I had the injection done, I just had it on one side of the neck. And this time, me and Dr. Lynch <coughs> talked about it. And he recommended going both sides of the neck. It was excellent, just like the first time, but even more so this time. And this time, because I had a relationship, what I didn't have the first time, I went to New York City for the first one, I didn't have a relationship with the staff that got me the injection. And being able to sit with Dr. Lynch, knowing what he went through, and he understood where I was coming from and exactly where my struggles were, and that conversation and that ability to connect with him, to connect with the staff, 
really gave me that, that extra push to dedicate myself to, okay, you have the tool now, but now you have to make it work for yourself. And so it's about what I, it was my responsibility now. Chris did her, do, her job, Dr. Lynch did his job, my family did their job because they didn't abandon me. Now it was up to me to, to make it work. And that's what I did. I committed myself to CPT. I didn't do it at Ohio State, but did it through the VA. I did intensive outpatient therapy. Went through that whole program. I continue with my doctors today. I continue with my medical staff. I actually listen to what they have to say and take their advice and not think I just have it under control. Um, <laughs> and I reached out more to my peers in my community. And that was one of the things that fades away just as quickly. You know, we, I, this room, we are a, a huge family. The veteran community is a family. But when you start to head down that path and you feel like you don't have anybody, even the brothers you serve with, you don't want to reach out to them. I know you're there, Chris. <laughs> but you don't want to reach out to them because you almost feel a sense of guilt, you feel shame, you feel weak, and most importantly, you just feel vulnerable. And admitting that you need an extra boost, you need an extra hand, you need some help is, is hard to do. And it was something I couldn't do back then and I still struggle with it now, but I definitely swallow that pride better now and can make that decision to ask for help when needed. And the best part about the injection is you have this ability to take things on and utilize the tools that you have. The injection is a tool, what you learn in CPT and talking to your doctors, all these different skills you get in life. You can utilize those tools that you can stay ahead of your problems because you still go through all the ups and downs of everyday life, the roller coasters of stress and emotions, everything, but now you have that capacity to handle them in a way that you're gonna end up reaching your end goals. And one of my goals was to, to go to Notre Dame. My dream was to go to Notre Dame. We grew up here with my family. Notre Dame football is a religion in my family. There's no other way to say it. I never thought I would be, I mean, it was a dream to ever think I'd actually walk into that campus other than a visitor. And I am in, uh, I'm getting my master's there now. So I'm a couple semesters into it. <laughs> my name is Brian. I was also treated uh, by Dr. Lynch. And my friends and people have asked me what it's like to get the treatment. And I asked Carlos, in fact, when he got his, what it felt like. And he said, I, I can just breathe again. I have my whole life back and all that. And that's kind of what I told John uh, about my treatment. It kind of feels like at the end of the day when you're wore down and you're tired and you just kind of pop your backpack off or for you ladies, when you come home, you pop that bra off and you feel good. <laughs> I didn't feel quite that good with it, but it felt pretty good. <laughs> uh, so I owe a lot to Christine and she has treated um, a number of, of uh, Marines that have served with me and, and friends and for that I owe you and uh, well, I'll continue to do what I do for you because of what you did for me. I take it home to my kids, to my wife. Um, I don't know why I did it. I, everything, I, I took it all out on my wife and God bless her for, for staying with me. I really I appreciate it. A lot of thanks to the painted horse. Um, funny story was, I had no idea what the Stella Gangling block was. Never heard of it. My wife, who was a bartender at the time, working for Chuck back at the, uh, what is it, the Bourbon Mill, and at the mill, she met the painted horse. She introduced me to them, which in turn introduced me to Christine, and Christine saved my life. She really did. Um, I was going through a really hard time. It was, it was tough. Um, the anger, the stress, I. I didn't want to be here anymore. And for us veterans, I truly believe when we're in the service, I was in the Army, 82nd Airborne, 3rd Brigade, 2nd of the 505th, and 4th Brigade, 1st of the 501st in Alaska. Excuse me, I'm getting choked up. Um, it's hard when you leave 150 people that are your brothers and sisters that are there to listen to you, take care of you, and then when we exit the service, it's you lose all of it. You know, Then you're just relying on yourself. And Christine helped me to find myself by getting me in touch with the doctors. I, I'm horrible with names. It was actually your partner that gave me the shot Bowling. in Annapolis. Yep, so um, I've had it two rounds now, and it's, it's allowed me to process life. We all deal with stressors and problems every day, things that annoy us and aggravate us. 
and I still get annoyed, I still get aggravated, but the difference is, is I don't take that home to my wife, and I don't take that home to my kids. So, that being said, I guess that's all I got. Christina, I just want to tell you so much. You saved my life. I appreciate everything you do. Thank you for loving the veteran. Especially Chris. I mean, it's, she's giving me, she's giving me my life back. She's giving me my life back, and she's given my daughter, her father back, and my parents, their son back, and my sister, her brother back. And that's all that I know a lot of times for you veterans it can feel hopeless, but this is a battle we are going to win. We are here for you guys. Just reach out to us.